You join me for episode four of PH Project Car, and today I believe we're making one of the biggest upgrades you can do in the hunt for performance. Nope, it doesn't involve stripping out our gorgeous cream leather interior in our Mark V GTI, nor does it involve throwing in some crazy engine swap. Nope, today we're gonna to be upgrading uh, me, with a little bit of help from him. This is PH Project Car, a 2006 VW Golf GTI that we're turning into a Mark 8 Golf R beating track car for just £10,000 using parts and accessories from eBay. And yes, that does include the car. In the last episode, we bolted on chunkier brakes, stickier tyres and very racy suspension, slashing the gap between the two cars around a lap of Kerberos Sprint Course from 5.5 seconds to 3.1. There's still plenty more I want to do with the car, and at the end of the series, you'll be able to win it. Before we do any more mods, we need to make the most of the upgrades we've already done to PH Project Car, and for that, I need professional help. Now, if you've seen episode two, and if you haven't, I'll leave a link to that in the top right-hand corner, you'll be familiar with Charles Rainford. Hello, Hello. Charles. Hello. Now, Charles is the friend of PH, and also a Porsche Carrera Cup GB champion, and I think I'm a good luck charm because since we started filming, you're doing pretty well this season. Yeah, thank you. It's been going fantastic so far. Um, obviously, the last few races be a dream. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that. So, you're my rival in this challenge. You're driving the Mark 8 Golf R, and I've got to beat you on track in PH Project Car. And the first time that we met up, you absolutely trounced me on circuit. So much so that today you're offering me pity tuition as some sort of sympathy for completely annihilating me. So I've got a little bit of track day experience, but what can the average track enthusiast expect from getting tuition from a professional racing driver like yourself, Charles? Well, the thing is when it comes to uh, tuition and instruction on circuit, um, we're looking at everything really. Um, obviously using the track more as well as uh, braking the correct way. If you do the correct thing at the right, at the correct time, it then means you're going to be giving less wear on your car, going fast and ultimately enjoying it more as well. Honestly, I can't wait. Now, the first thing that came into my mind was, let's use a data logger to compare data sets and get really deep into it. But they're usually banned on track days like this. So is there anything that you can recommend to kind of measure how I might be able to go faster and use a reference point so I can improve my lap times? Yeah, as you say, unfortunately, we're not allowed to time live while we're out on the circuit with a data logger. So um, if you've got any kind of action camera or anything, we can re record video footage from inside the car. It'd be crucial to look back on it and slow everything down. OK, sounds like a good idea. I'm going to grab an action camera off eBay and you get yourself ready. I know your hair's done, but you might want to put your helmet on. Our classroom will be Brands Hatch, one of the all-time great circuits of the world and a track I absolutely adore. I've driven the short indie loop a few times, but this time I'll be on the 2.6 mile Grand Prix course. This will get the adrenaline pumping. I just can't wait to get stuck in. Before we get to doing our proper hot laps and Charles can dig into some proper training, we need to do a sighting lap first. So this is just a general quick drive around the track, not at major speed, and just getting a feel for the circuit really, isn't it? So at the moment, Giles, we're just kind of looking out for kind of important things. We right? are, yes. I mean, especially things. reference points. Um, cam, that's going to be the biggest thing. Um, as you can see on the circuit, especially on the right-hand side, you've got a yellow cone. That's going to be our turning point. Uh, but I've actually put some orange markers out here as well. So orange cone there, that's going to be your apex. So we can use a bit of curb there as well. Uh, and then we're just getting a feel for the brakes, feel for the tyres, how the car is feeling, really. We're actually now about to turn left out onto the GP circuit, which will be very exciting. This, um, this is what I'm really excited about. I've been so looking forward to driving the GP circuit. I've seen the uh, Fanatec GT series here loads of times, and it is, it's just a breathtaking thing to see. It's almost like the UK's mini Nürburgring, sort of. Definitely. You see now, especially when we get out onto here, uh, really it drops away massively now before we get to the first call on the GP circuit at Hawthorne. Um, it does mean as well, obviously from a driving perspective, you do have quite a lot of compression at the bottom here, as well as your braking zone is uphill. The corner as you turn also goes uphill, so you really can brake very, very late. 
this is so unbelievably cool. I can't believe how tight this corner is. So this, this is, uh, which one is this? This is Hawthorne. Hawthorne's. Hawthorne. Yep. I've always thought that's the toughest corner on this track because there's, it's really tight, really fast, and there is zero runoff. This is it, but we're coming through Westfield now, which is the second corner of the Grand Prix circuit. Both corners are done very similarly. This is, in my opinion, now the hardest part of the Grand Prix circuit. Um, this is uphill, blind. It's it's a very, very good part of the circuit. You don't really break too much here as well. And you see if you turn in now, go for that orange cone. It's an early turn in, but it's completely blind. This next bit's really, really fun as well. It's Sterling's. Uh, it's actually uh, banked. Um, I love this. With a flat this curb on the inside. So, so you turn in at yellow and you want to use all of that flat curb on the inside. How cool does that feel? <gasps> There's something so <laughs> satisfying about running over curbs. As you see as well, the track usage is going to be the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, especially getting used to parts where it's blind and whatnot. But um, creating efficient rotation is going to be really, really key, but also getting on the power nicer to use all the track width. Into here as well, as we go through clearways, it's a very different feel to when you're on the Indy circuit because the circuit drops away a lot more. You're carrying a lot more speed, obviously, so you can trust the compression out there as well to keep you on the circuit. That's the sighting lap done. That's the sighting lap. Oh, Let's go. Let's go. You want to go in quite early here. You want to go in now. That's it. Hug this inside and turning in a bit more. Good, squeeze the gas and now onto the power. That's good. See, well I've got the power down there, but I can still feel the traction control it's kicking in. a little bit, isn't it's it? It's not wanting to play ball. Nice and wide, that's it. Nice late apex, now onto the power. Good. Car in the left. So we're busy for this first lap or so whilst everybody sorts their positions. So down to third, we're gonna go nice and wide. You're gonna turn at the end of this kerb. And end now, the, where the cone is, in you yeah. go. Yeah, that's it. God, can you feel the grip from the tyres? It's good, isn't it? It's got so that's much fantastic. more bite than it yeah. did before. I think that's even more bite, to be fair, than the uh, the Golf R. That felt, fan that felt fantastic. Oh, that's what I want to hear, Charles. <laughs> right, down the straight that is that's actually it. So we position ourselves straight. on the left-hand side. These guys might break a little bit early, so just be careful. We'll start breaking this change of tarmac. That's going to be our reference to start with. That's change it, of tarmac, gear. Yeah. And in we go. Good. You can be back on full power now because it's uphill. That's it. Very wide. Nice. Whenever I've done a track day, I've always struggled with confidence under braking. I always feel like I brake too early because if I brake too late, yes, I might make up a bit of time, but I also risk putting the car in the gravel or worse, in the barrier. And as we're giving this car away at the end of the season, I really don't want to make a mess of it. Great, get the car to turn, lovely stuff. That's it, remember, pop back across to the right-hand side. Very good. That's it, just bleed out those brakes a little bit. Nice, and back on the power again. Nice bit of curve, look at that. It's so a great feeling, isn't just it? Just eating up the curves. <laughs> got so much more grip. Good, make sure we grab third here, that's the one. Good, turn the car. Ah, a little bit wide wider, wider apex tree. there. Yeah. We didn't quite commit to the turn as well as we could have. Using the full width of the track is also something I've struggled to get my head around. Yes, it sounds quite straightforward, just pull over to one side or the other, but when you've got crests and bumps in the road and when you're at a track like Brands Hatch where there aren't many straights, it's really hard to know where to position the car, particularly when you spend a lot of time braking and turning. It's all about the exit, it's always all about the exit. So here we're gonna try and brake a little bit less. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, uh, off the brakes. I wimped out. That's okay, it's blind to be fair. So you each lap you get more confident there. Yeah. You can really take a chunk out of that <laughs> corner, but I need to go so much wider. We do, we do, but that's just carrying more speed in, to be fair, over the blind crest. After a bit of tuition with Charles, we headed back into the pit lane. I don't really feel like I strung together a really clean lap, and there was definitely a lot left on the table. We've certainly got quite a lot to go through. First laps are down. I've got serious helmet hair and I need a break. So we're going to go through the video footage that we recorded in the car. Charles, what are we looking out for here? Uh, we're looking out for general things such as track usage, making sure we're not obviously doing wrong things wrong by going across the track limits, all that kind of thing, as well as general technique, really. So we've got the footage here, but have you noticed anything? Um, only a few things. I think one thing I really want to address kind of going more towards this afternoon is our track usage. Uh, so we want to think about using much more road, especially on the entry, as we can see here into Paddock Hill Bend. Um, currently, we're in the middle of the road, and that means you need to use more steering lock to actually get into the corner. Therefore, we have to slow the car down more. So we want to be using much more road, especially on the corner entry, as well as the exit to keep the steering wheel as straight as possible. That way you can carry maximum speed through the corners. OK, I think it's just something of where I get really concerned if I get too far over, you leave so little margin for error. So, OK, so track, track uh, using up the full room of the track is, is one yeah. thing. 
I'm hoping that's it. Is there anything more? There's one more thing. Okay. Um, right. Sorry, sorry. We <laughs> want to try and add some trail braking into the mix as well. So now you're doing a really good job of braking in a straight line, coming off the brakes and then turning in, but it's not the most efficient and fastest way of driving. So we want to still be braking in a straight line, but actually reducing the brake pressure and then turning the car in at the same, t at the same time in the slower corners. That way you're keeping the weight much more on the mm. nose yeah. and the rear is going to rotate around you. Therefore, as well, we don't need to use as much steering lock. So I think that's, that's pretty normal. It can always be hard to listen to criticism, but it obviously makes such a big difference out on track. But is there any bad habits that you've noticed that I'm doing that you've seen in other drivers? Um, to be fair, I must give it to you, you have no bad habits. Uh, yes. So I was really happy to see that. Um, generally, a few bad habits that people can do when they're on track is not keeping their hands at nine and three on the wheel and okay. crossing over if you need more. Just because on the road, obviously, we normally use a push-pull technique. Right. Um, but that's not quite as smooth on track because you don't need that much steering lock in most cases. So really, that's going to be your maximum in a lot of places. Now, obviously, Charles is a massive help in these situations, and you can hire him for the day, for driving training purposes, that is, or if you need a very fast racing driver. But it also helps to grab yourself an action cam off eBay because it makes such a difference when you go back and look through your footage, right? 100%. Obviously, when you're out on track live, as much as I'm trying to help you, as much as I can say, and get here, do this, try and do that, um, in the moment, the adrenaline is high, so it's a really, really good opportunity to, to get yourself an action camera or any kind of data logger to come back, have a look at the footage and really piece it together, slow it all down, uh, that way you can absorb it much more efficiently. Now a data logger would be the piece de resistance in this kind of situation, but the problem is, is that you can't use them on track days like this because you can't be caught using timing. So what we've done instead is we've had a look at the video footage and timed my cleanest lap. It's really hard to get a clean lap on a track day because you've got loads of other users out there. But the best I could find was a two minutes and five seconds. So I think what I should do is put everything that I've learned from Charles's amazing tuition, put it out to practice and see if I can go any faster. But first, lunch. It's time to put your tuition into practice. <laughs> know the areas that I need to focus on. That's it. So once we get the car warmed up, which won't take long, uh, we can get on it. Okay, awesome. So remember into here we want to use more track width on the left-hand side. This was the hardest part of the circuit when I came here this morning. Hawthorne. I need to come out wide. I see the cone. I think I That's can still... That's not bad. You can still use a bit, still bit more there. We still turned it a bit early. You were fantastic through here, through Westfield. This was uh, this was really been really nice all morning. This so. is one of my favourite corners. Yeah, again, beautiful work once again. Look at that. Okay, here we're trying to brake less. Use nice amount of track on the left hand side. That's nice. And roll the car in, good. And we can use all the track width on exit as well now. Yeah, not bad oh, at all. Well done. Bit better. I just, that was I a bit felt better. a little bit more confident than that run. Clear ways. Lovely. That's it, and roll back into the power. Now use the track width here again. We've also got that compression on exit to hold you in. Great job there, well done. It's again nice and wide. This is a good line, well done. Yes. Yeah, that was much nicer. You, you feel just, the flow there. You feel the flow, but you just really feel like, it's all so blind here at Brands. You just have to commit to it. It's the commitment that's so hard. Good, that's it. Use the left-hand side. Good, keep Jesus it straight. Christ. That's it. And back of the power now. Flat, flat, flat to the to floor. floor. Good, that's it. Carry the speed in here. You got it. That's it. Turn the car and on the power now. Get the steering lock off. Good. Perfect. Well done. Putting Charles's tuition to use, I could feel my confidence growing every second. Lap after lap, I sensed that I was chiseling away at my original time by using the full force of those beefier brakes and the extra bite of the track focused tyres. That's it, less braking, less braking, less braking, good. Now back on the power. I feel like I'm able to apply the brakes a lot more smoothly. I feel like I'm not quite as stabby as I was this Toast. morning. There's a lot more finesse there now. See, adding some trail braking now, how much better does that feel? Just, God, that felt fantastic through there. That's it, remember to roll the speed here. You can carry a lot in, back on the power now. Go on, trust it, use the width. Fantastic work. Oh wow, yeah, this is good. Check a flag. That felt great. So Charles, give me the time. How fast did I go? Well, it's really hard to say the exact lap time oh. uh, just because obviously on a track day, there's a lot of traffic on our 
best lap that I think we did. Um, it, we had two big stops. So it, on a conservative effort, it's about five seconds quicker we're now going. So I think that's a really big improvement and I'm gonna take you up on conservative estimate because I think it was maybe a little bit more than that. So if I apply that to Kerbera, I'm going to absolutely thrash you. Yes, although I'm afraid Brands Hatch is a much longer circuit oh. than Kerbera. Kerbera is much tighter, much twistier, and obviously a much shorter lap time, but still five seconds is still a fantastic effort. Precisely, and I think what we're trying to prove here really is that yes, it's so much fun to throw as much kit as you can at your own project car, but really professional driver training like we've had today really just brings a build together. So in the next episode, what we're gonna do is take this back to Pip at BRS Automotive and start throwing more power at it because I think PH Project Car is ready for a bit of a tune-up. And because eBay has everything from high-end aftermarket components to its certified recycled parts, Finding the bits we need for our ambitious build has been an absolute breeze already. I'll leave a link down in the description for you to go and check it out. And remember, you can win PH Project Car. All you have to do is enter the competition using the link in the description below. You could be the new owner of our Mark V Golf GTI Project Car once we've crammed a load of power under the bonnet and hopefully beaten this guy at the same time. <laughs>